Hi folks, this is Donald. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. In spite of my best attempts to avoid it, I have been having a little bit of a struggle in recent weeks with Urban Sketcher Comparison Envy. I was looking at what some successful, well-established Urban Sketchers were producing and I started to seriously doubt myself and question my whole approach to art. Here I am making whimsical, cartoony drawings with wibbly-bobbly buildings and childlike bubble cars when what I should be doing is proper grown-up art. That's what people want to see. That's what a proper artist does. I even took last week off from making YouTube videos so that I could have the time to do a course by a fancy watercolour artist, convincing myself that I was now going to start sketching in a completely different way, just like them, and sketch happily ever after. Well, let's just say it didn't quite work out like that, but happily I'm over all of that now, back to my old self, making art the way I want to make art, and because I think some of you might find it helpful, I want to share with you what led me astray and how I got myself back on track. If you're anything like me, I bet you look at other artists' drawings, paintings or sketches and think, I wish I could do that. Why are they so much better at this than I am? Rather than being inspired, you get deflated. You start to doubt yourself, put yourself down and say, right, that's it, I'm completely changing the way I make art. Or worse, you tell yourself, I'll never be any good at this, I'm giving up, I'll do something else. Knitting, that looks like fun. And then you get really into your knitting, buying all the different balls of wool and the knitting needles and learning exciting new knitting patterns until suddenly, before you know what's hit you, you're wondering how that other person's knitting can be so much better than my knitting. And so it goes on. So here's where I went off track. One of my favourite sketch artists is Alex Hilkertz, an American living in Paris who does these amazing loose ink and watercolour sketches of cafes in Paris with wild bright red awnings and scratchy minimalist ink lines. I love his work and discovered that he had a course on Domestica teaching his method, so I felt it was time to up my game, learn how he does it and become this fancy watercolour artist. That's where the problem started. To be perfectly honest, I just couldn't do it. I followed what he was doing in the way he taught, and while his version looked amazing, my version looked like it was a catastrophic mess. Three times I tried the same sketch, and each time it just seemed to get worse, reaching whole new levels of comparison envy. Now I should make it clear that this is not the fault of Alex or the course, it's just me. The course is actually really good, it doesn't cost a lot, Alex is reassuringly calm and explains his method slowly and clearly and I would genuinely recommend it to anyone wanting to learn this type of watercolour sketching. It's just that it didn't really work for me personally. When you're doing courses like this it's easy to forget that the reason artists like Alex are so good is simply because they've been doing it for so long. In a lot of cases making art is their job. Alex was even a storyboard artist for major Hollywood movies. They have done the hard yards, spent all those years honing and improving their craft and it shows on the page. In contrast, I have never done any art at all until I started 16 months ago. Of course they are better at this than me, that's the way it should be. But what might have been a depressing I'm giving up experience in fact brought something really positive out of it. Having tried and failed all these proper grown-up sketches, I grabbed a piece of paper and a pen and sketched this simple little scene of a Scottish village hall, and immediately things just clicked again. Going through this process and ending up back where I started was so helpful because it reminded me of something quite important. I do what I do because this is the way I want to do it. If sketching cartoony pictures is what I enjoy, if it's what fits my personality and the way I want to express my creativity, then I don't need to compare myself to anyone. I don't need to try to be someone I'm not or copy a completely different artist or style just because that seems better or more popular. I have talked about this sort of stuff before but I think it's only now that it has fully sunk in. I have to do this my own way or what's the point? From now on, what I'm going to do, and what I would suggest to you as well, is when you're looking at other artists' work on Instagram or YouTube or wherever, or you know, following courses and tutorials, take the inspiration that it offers 
adapt what you like about it into the way that works for you and try not to feel any pressure to exactly copy what they do as if their way is the only way. Last week I saw yet another high profile sketcher declaring as fact that drawing with solid lines is the wrong way to sketch and that if you do this your sketches will have no character. I've heard this so many times and maybe that's why there's always been a niggling doubt at the back of my mind. But now I can say once and for all that if my way is the wrong way, then I don't want to be right. A British newspaper once reviewed a painting by the artist Ellis Lowry in which it condescendingly declared that the painting looked like it had been done by a child. Lowry went on to become one of the most acclaimed and influential artists that Britain has ever produced. Now I'm not suggesting I'm ever going to be Lowry, clearly, but just like he did, from now on I'm sticking to my guns. I'm going to draw the way I want to draw, keep on practicing and improving my skills, and above all, keep reminding myself that this is supposed to be fun. And if it isn't, well, there's always knitting.